Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. We got five big stories for you again today. And oh boy, am I so excited about this. One of them I've actually already done today. Uh, earlier today, we actually did a small little live stream for Mario Strikers because guess what? There's now a demo out for Mario Strikers. We'll talk about that and when they're going to do some online play testing for that. Uh, we're going to be talking about also Nintendo recognizing a major issue with Nintendo Switch online. Uh, and that's actually kind of good but also this shouldn't be a problem in the first place so good and bad i suppose depending on how you want to look at it we got new rumors for zelda games we got stuff from reggie fils out there basically putting out his roadmap for how he would handle the future of nintendo switch uh, we have a new announcement for a Sony State of Play and so much more. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and choosing to get your news right here at Nintendo Prime. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel. If this is the first time you've ever seen our content, we also have a big event coming up. Hey, Prime Gaming Fest, Prime Gaming Fest. Yeah, you're going to hear me say Prime Gaming Fest quite a bit because it's less than two weeks away from June 9th to June 14th. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a massive festival, thousands of dollars in giveaways, reacting to all of the video game news as it happens. We have video game competitions, we have a Smash Bros tournament, a Splatoon 2 tournament, and so much more. We're giving away a bunch of these. You can see this? See this? Like, we, like this is like one of the giveaway items. There's so many giveaway items in my studio right now. Literally, anywhere I reach, there is stuff to give away. It is piling up to the ceiling in here. So. I hope you guys are looking forward to all that, and let's get right into the news, starting with our first story, dealing with Mario Strikers. So, Mario Strikers Battle League First Kick just launched today. What the hell is First Kick? It is an app that you can download off of the Nintendo Switch eShop that lets you, well, play Mario Strikers. Now, right now, what you can play of the game is the tutorial, as I was playing earlier earlier today and then besides the tutorial you will eventually be able to do an online play test from june 3rd through june 5th now the times here are going to be listed in pacific standard time sorry i'm not going to do all the conversions you guys can figure that out uh so the tests right now are going to be running on june 3rd from 8 a.m to 9 a.m pacific june 4th from 4 a.m to 5 a.m pacific noon to 1 p.m pacific and 8 p.m to 9 p.m pacific and then on june 5th they're going to do 4 a.m to 5 a.m pacific and 12 p.m to 1 p.m pacific so one hour segments they're obviously doing stress testing making sure everything's going to be good to go for launch they have done this before with splatoon and other various games over the years so this isn't a surprise that they're doing this again with yet another game that's going to be heavily heavily focused on online multiplayer so much so we have clubs and everything else it's going to be really really excited now what they also did is announce something extra cool today they said that we we're going to be getting free content updates post launch including new characters one of the big criticisms of the game so far has been that there's essentially only eight characters enough to fill out two teams at launch and uh, there's some big missing characters like daisy and such so people are wondering man that's that's not very many characters at launch well they are planning to give us more for free over time we have no idea when these characters are going to come we don't know what they're going to be we don't know what additional content is going to be added i'm sure there's going to be new gear and stuff like they do in splatoon i don't know as long as the gameplay is really good which when i played in the tutorial it really was good and all of the modes are really really fun and really really engaging that's really all i care about at this point so if they do that cool i'll be i'll be one happy camper uh next up Nintendo did something also very strange, uh, but also kind of cool, but also pointing out a problem. So Nintendo put out a tweet today uh, that stated they are aware of the Kirby 64 damage bug that essentially happens in underwater levels. You get hit by certain enemies and you're in a stun lock and you can't do anything except restart the game losing progress uh they did apologize for this bug and they promised that they will fix it next week now this is really cool that they're actually going to patch it and fix it and acknowledging this problem even though it's been there now since the game came out however it's also one of those bugs that really shouldn't have made it through qa testing in the first place because it's a very common bug that's the thing this isn't like a special unique thing where someone's trying to like sequence break and go through the wall and trying to like glitch the game and oh my gosh here's this thing that breaks the game no this just happens through standard normal gameplay getting hit by an enemy it's very easy to trigger would have been caught in qa testing no problem and it didn't so I, on one hand thank you nintendo for recognizing it and fixing it on another hand why did this even get through testing in the first place this is 
Not the sort of bug that should have ever made it public. And we definitely have become accustomed as Nintendo consumers to not expect these sort of bugs in our games that come out, even old school ones. So, hey, they're going to fix it. I don't know. There's really not much more to say. Let me know. Are you disappointed the bug even exists? Are you just happy they're fixing it? Or do you just not really care? Next up is really, really cool. Sony is actually going to be kicking off all of the June events this year. Starting on June 2nd, they're going to have a brand new state of play uh, that is going to be happening at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And they will be around 30 minutes long and have new announcements and sneak peeks. Uh, that's just the basic definition. They have some other stuff in there where they're going to mention VR and some other things like that. Uh, it's going to be a pretty packed show if it's 30 minutes long so that's really cool sony's kicking off june that's going to be really exciting we will obviously be live stream reacting to that state of play in fact i'll probably have my live stream set up here if not by the end of today definitely by the end of tomorrow so you guys can go set notifications for that state of play next week so that's going to be that's really exciting like yeah it's before prime gaming fest that's okay things are going to happen we're going to get news all throughout june so i'm just really happy that sony has actually given us something because we really do need to hear about their games just like we need to hear about Xbox Bethesda, but we know that's coming June 12th. So, hey, kudos, now Nintendo. The ball's in your court. The two major platform holders have their dates. What's yours? Next up, Reggie fils Oh, the former president of Nintendo of America, uh, spoke in an interview with Game Informer. And he wanted to, obviously he's been on a, a book tour lately advertising his book and all of that. But in this interview, he talked about something really cool, and that is... His advice to Nintendo, which, I mean, Nintendo, if they're going to pay attention to anyone who doesn't work at Nintendo, it's going to be the person who did work at Nintendo for a decade plus. Uh, and he has some advice over, over how he would handle the transition to next gen and also what he would do with the current Switch moving forward. So here are his quotes. Specific to Nintendo and Switch, the company has also said that in their view, the Switch is still halfway through its life cycle. Technically, they haven't said that this year. They said that last year, but that's neither here nor there. If that's true, the company needs to be thinking about what it's going to do over the next four or five years to continue the core business momentum for the Switch. Then it's about following the heels of that and what the future holds. It's quite a heavy lift to be done. I believe that first and foremost, you need to be thinking about the content pipeline and what's going to keep players engaged. I do think you have to look at history and what have been some of the historical tactics that have been worked to the maintain a life cycle of a particular generation. And that includes everything from a mid-cycle upgrade to thinking about pricing and value. There's a number of different tactics you can play, but fundamentally, the content pipeline needs to be there. I continue to be very active in this industry. I'm active as an investor and advisor, and I think that being aware of the demographic changes and geographic opportunities about how technology is continuing to evolve, these are all things a company like Nintendo need to be thinking about in order to launch a system after Switch. So I think that's some pretty sage advice for launching a system after Switch. Uh, it doesn't really tell them what to do, just things they need to consider when moving on from Switch. And then obviously, hey, yeah, the content pipeline needs to be there but also hey mid-gen refresh like he, he's basically saying, hey we need to get a mid-gen refresh if you're going to keep the switch going for another four years you need a mid-gen refresh uh that's the switch pro he's not saying it exists maybe he does know if it exists or not i have no idea but um he is saying that that is what he would do uh and the advice he would give nintendo is mid-gen refresh keep the content pipeline strong which it is strong at the moment so um pretty sage advice i would say from reggie fils -Aimé. And uh, kind of sucks if we don't know if Doug Bowser is saying these same things to the, the people in Japan. Kind of hope he is. But I, I don't really know that he has as much sway as good old Reggie did. So our last story is, uh, it's a rumor. All right? Just, just, just kind of bank this in the rumor mill. Back up the truckload of self. Throw it over your right shoulder for luck. And we'll see what happens here. So, look. Marco Mauro... Um, has gotten some stuff wrong. He's also gotten a lot of stuff right. He is a user on Twitter who last year got the entire lineup for Nintendo correct. Uh, he also got an entire Nintendo Direct at one point correct. So whether or not he has inside sources or not, or just got really lucky at guessing, I don't know. But he's done enough that I pay attention and at least follow him just to see what's happening. And anytime that there is a Zelda related post from anyone that purports to be an insider, I kind of perk my ears up. 
because you know what? Zelda's my favorite franchise. I played every game, including the CDI and the Tingle spinoff games, even though I had to suffer through some Japanese stuff. Uh, yeah, let's just say I really, really love Zelda. If I'm willing to go that much into it, I really love Zelda, right? So, look... I'm going to pay attention, and we're probably going to talk about it if I find it to be plausible. Now, in this case, he just put up a simple tweet. A simple tweet. But remember, he doesn't really tweet anything but leaks. He doesn't just put out tweets for fun. He only puts out leaks. So he put out a, a tweet that said, choose wisely. And it obviously had a blue link and a red link. Now, when I saw this and I saw all the reports on this and all the people speculating on it, I sat there and I'm like, what are we talking about? That's official art from Four Swords. So we're clearly getting either a Four Swords remake or Four Swords Adventures, right? Like, I, that's the art that he posted. It's official Nintendo art for those games. But here's the thing. Choosing. You don't have to choose in Four Swords or Four Swords Adventures. There's no choice. So choosing seems to imply that there's two and the red and blue happen to match the color of oracle of seasons and oracle of ages and that seems to be what a lot of people are thinking he's talking about here you have the red and blue you choose which version you're going to play and oracle of seasons and oracle of ages are the only dual release zelda games in existence i think that they coming back would be fantastic i think it is something i could foresee grezzo potentially working on after all they did the Link's awakening remaster remake whatever you want to call that so why couldn't they possibly do this for the oracle series as well and then maybe follow that up with the minish cap right because capcom had those three games uh that would be really 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 cool so i again back the truck of salt up dump it on my head pile it up but Bottom line is, I think it's really interesting to at least entertain the thought, and this isn't the first time we've had rumors about Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. There are rumors dating back all the way to last year talking about how these are in the works. So maybe he's just piling on the rumor mill from back in the day. Maybe he's just hinting at four swords. I don't know. Maybe he's just pulling shit out his ass. Beats the hell out of me. But I do know entertaining the mere thought of Oracle and Seasons, Oracle of Seasons, and Oracle of Ages coming back. It kind of it kind of tickles it, it, it tickles the fun bits on my body. So, I'm really really uh hoping that this might come true. I know there's a lot of stuff about the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD, and I definitely think those come over if not this year. They're, they're coming at some point, right? Maybe Nintendo wants to keep them in the barrel for the next system. That could be a thing as well. After all, uh Nintendo could run out of Zelda games to port. So then, hey, next system, then maybe bring them there. But I will say an Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages remake would be great. Those games are massively underrated. I don't think enough people played them. And if they came to Switch, I think they could find the exact same audience Link's Awakening did and end up selling four to five million, crushing the original sales. By the way, each crushing the original sales. Because if you didn't know, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages aren't your traditional like dual release games. You think of dual release games, you usually think of Pokemon, right? Where oh, you get the red, blue, red version, blue version. We got Scarlet, Violet coming up. Where it's basically the same game with some minor differences in terms of what Pokemon are in them. Yeah, that's not that's that's not what, what Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages is. One of them focuses on dungeons, the other one focuses on on musical instruments. Like it's an entirely different concept of Zelda game, uh, and it's really neat. So. Anyways, I really kind of hope that that's the thing that he's hinting at. The red and blue, the choose wisely seem to be the hint towards that. But then again, the official art itself is from Four Swords. You let me know what you think about that stuff down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. Be sure to tune in on June 9th to Prime Gaming Fest. Uh, June 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Those are all the dates. It's getting jam-packed. We have so much stuff to talk about. So many competitions. I am thrilled. I'm going to check in with you guys at uh another time because uh this is friday we don't do live streams on friday so uh i will catch you guys uh if not over the weekend because my cousin has a wedding uh, i'll catch you on monday you know, we'll, we'll see what happens i don't know if i'm gonna get anything out tomorrow with the wedding but hey you never know all right guys peace